if part of your listing process is to spend hour upon hour in front of your computer listing books, then I'm here to tell you that you are losing money just by doing that. In this video, I'm going to go over the way that I list books using Inventory Lab. Coming up next. Hey everybody, it's Manny from Manny's Book Bag, and I'm back with another video. In this video, like I said in the intro, I want to show you some process. I want to give you some tips on how to list. Now, I currently use Inventory Lab, but I am also doing a free trial on Acceler List. Regardless of which tool you use, there's going to be enough tips in this video that you should be able to use these concepts regardless of the software. Now, I am about to take you on my screen and show you a lot of the basics of what I do, but there's a couple things that I'm going to take for granted. I'm going to take for granted that you've already cleaned your books, you've already processed them. If it's in your nature to polybag or otherwise protect your books, that's a whole different conversation. But if it is, I'm going to assume that that's already done. I'm going to assume that you've already graded all your books and that they are in a pile with the barcode facing up. I'm also going to assume that you have a desktop laser scanner. If it's a handheld, that's great. Personally, I use uh, one of those continuous laser scanners where I just have to hold the barcode up with one hand and it scans it for me continuously. Whichever one you use, uh, they are going to be key so that you don't have to sit there and type in numbers. But with that being said, let's go to the screen so I can show you what I do All from right, beginning to end. Alright everybody, here we are. This is the front page of my Inventory Lab account. As you can see, my name is up here in the right hand corner. And uh, the first thing that I need to do when I'm going to get ready to list is I need to create a new batch. So let me walk you through that really quickly. When you create a new batch, this window is going to pop up. And the first thing that you see is the batch name, usually comprising of the date and time. You can leave it exactly the way it is right there. Uh, I like to change it. And I like to change it to the month, as well as uh, the number of the batch for the month. Uh, I have done 18 batches this month. So I'm going to name this batch May 19. It just helps me sort through them pretty easily in Seller Central when I'm looking at all the shipments. Uh, if you were using a buy list of some sort with Scoutify, uh, you could do that here. I can't explain it because I don't use it. Uh, you have a ship from address. And if you have, uh, let's say you're on a road trip and you're sourcing from the road and you're going to be shipping as you go, uh, you can actually enter alternate addresses and you can use this drop down here to select different addresses because you need to remember this is not just a, uh, a bulk listing tool. This is actually going to create the shipment and have it ready to go for you in Seller Central. So everything that you enter here is exactly the way it's going to be on your shipment. I always keep it on individual products for the packing type. Uh, if you're case packing, you can also drop down and select that instead but we're going to leave it on individual channels. You could do FBA or Merchant Fulfill. You could list either way. FBA is the way I always keep it. Workflow type is live or private. For now, I'm going to keep it on private because they generally will function the same way. When I always uh, typically will list live uh, because it will immediately create the listing for you. It will immediately add it to the shipment. And as soon as you submit it, you know that that is indeed the destination warehouse that it's going to. So it makes it really easy to keep stacks and pack them that way. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to keep it on private because I don't actually want it to report to Amazon. And private allows you to build your batch and then only assign it to warehouses when you submit the batch at the end. Uh, this will be perfect because when we're done here, I'm just going to delete the batch. Labeling preference, you can choose to label or you can choose to have Amazon FBA label it for you. Uh, but I will go ahead and label all my items myself. And in this drop down here, this is where you would turn your box contents on or off. I keep it off because generally speaking, I only do one box shipments. It makes it really easy. I can usually get a one box shipment of 30 to 40 books done in about 20 to 30 minutes packed and loaded. So it's not uh, that big a deal for me. I rarely uh, 
do multiple box shipments. So once I'm happy with what I see here, I go ahead and I create the shipment. Now I'm going to walk you through the first book here. Uh, I, I made a couple of pretend stacks. I got a couple books that are very good, a couple of books that are in good condition, and one book that I'm going to list in acceptable so that you can see just the flow of how I change conditions and everything that I do to really speed things up. Uh, but the first thing that I do, once I create the batch, I got to make sure that I'm ready to list. And there's two major things that I do before I start scanning away. Uh, the first thing has to do with this custom SKU that is right here. As you all know from my reprice it videos, I am a big proponent that everybody should be using custom SKUs. It, it makes the sorting of your inventory completely stress-free and uh, really organizes you very well. You can also use these custom SKUs when you are sorting through your inventory and looking things up in Seller Central. There is a method to my madness to why I created my SKU exactly like this. Uh, let's say I'm in Seller Central and I'm looking at my active inventory and I wanted to see what is still active from 2017. I could actually type 2017 into my search bar in Seller Central and all of my active inventory from this year will pop up. Now let's say I want to dice it down a little closer and let's say I just want to look at my books from this year. I could search 2017 book and all of this year's books in the category will pop up. Same thing with CD or RA. They will pop up on the screen because of the way that I created my SKU. Now let's say I want to go back into 2016 and see what's going on with uh, November's inventory. I could go into that search bar and type 2016 book slash NOV and all of my inventory that is still active that I listed in November would pop up. So if you choose to reprice manually yourself, you could actually take it one month at a time and knock it all out in a week because of the way you organize yourself. That's just a tip, guys. Custom SKUs are key. But let's say, for example, this was not an adequate SKU. I had to change the date or I had to uh, change my average buy cost for the batch. Uh, this happens to be correct because I did it already. But otherwise, I would just hit edit, and when this box popped up, let's say I was listing CDs instead, I could change this to CD. Uh, if this was the 25th and I wanted to list it for today, the 26th, I just change the date there, I change the cost there, and then I save. And to double check my work, the SKU that is here should reflect the changes that you made. That's the first thing that I do. The second thing that I do is I go into my name and I click on settings. I come over here to this bar on the left here and I want to look at default condition notes. I, I'm going to be listing a couple of books in very good and I want to see if this is the correct note. Yes, this is my uh, general condition note for very good. I want to make sure that I've got the right condition note for good. Let's say for example this is the right one. Let's say uh, for example I had a note in here that reflected that uh, the last book that I had listed in good was a former library book. Well, that's not going to be good for me. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to put in the correct condition notes that I have pre-saved down below. And when I've got that in its right place, I hit save changes. I see that the condition notes have updated successfully. And I know that good is actually good to go. And then I have, an, I have a book that I'm going to list as acceptable. I want to make sure that uh, it's correct. Like, see, in, in this case, it happens to be former library, and I, I don't want to use that particular book uh, note. I'll use, for example, let's say this is the note that I want to use for that. I'll copy and paste it in, hit save. It's somewhat correctly, and now I should be ready to list. So I go back to list, open batches, and there I am. Now this is the batch that I'm in. Now I, uh, I'm going to walk you through two methods of listing with Inventory Lab. Uh, the first method is the traditional one-touch method. This is going to give you uh, what most people consider to be the most control in listing. But I will also tell you that for something that is supposed to speed up your listing, it is quite a bit slower compared to the method that I use. So let's go ahead and use this. And now these are just books that I've got laying around the house that I'm going to use to illustrate my, uh, my listing method. Uh, please don't think for a second that I'm actually going to list a mass market paperback. 
but uh, let's carry on with this. I scan the book, and the first thing that I look at is to make sure that I've got the correct book as far as the uh, the artwork being there. It's in the book category, and here's where you're going to make your changes. The very first listing that you make is going to take just slightly longer than the rest. Your quantity is one. It's always highlighted, but uh, typically that's going to be the way it is. I rarely uh, list multiple quantities of the same book. Below that is your cost per unit. Now, I use uh, average cost per batch. So once I change this, it'll never change again. Uh, $1.40 is correct. I could just go in there and change it if I had to. Uh, you will also see your purchase date is extremely important. Uh, it helps me to organize a lot of my... Uh, my accounting that way and, and I do my best to make sure that it matches up with my receipts uh, if you are going to try and track results by a supplier like if you have a particular thrift store or a particular library that you want to see how their books perform over time you could type your supplier in there I don't mess with that uh, at least not anymore you just want to verify really quickly that your custom SKU is indeed correct and uh, also, you want to make sure you're in the correct condition note. So in my case, I'm going to start off with my very good books, and that is the correct condition note. Now, I will also tell you that in the traditional one-touch method, you will come over, once you're all done with this, to your pricing. Now, you will have to enter your list price. Now, when you look up here in these boxes, uh, these are the most competitive offers. You, this is your Merchant Fulfilled New. Merchant Fulfilled Used with Condition, and your FBA offers. Now, these are not going to be all of your FBA offers. Keep that in mind. These are just competitive offers. If you see an offer that has an O in front of it, that offer has the buy box. The offer has an A next to it. That is Amazon. So if I see this OA on this offer here, this is Amazon's new price, and they have the buy box on it. So uh, one of the things that you can do is to click on this P right here, and it takes you to all of the Amazon offers. You can click here if you need to check your Keepas. You could click here if you want to go to Camel, Camel, Camel. You can check prices on eBay. You could check prices on Bookscouter. It's actually a very comprehensive method if you wanted to price your items as you list it. In my case here, uh, $6.58 being a very hard ceiling, uh, I would be listing this book right around $5.99. Uh, here's a tip. You could actually type it in right here or... Let's say, for example, as I'm going through there, I see that you know that's $5.99. If I click on this one right here that says $5.99, you will see that my price has automatically been changed. That's just a quick little way of saving yourself some typing and so it doesn't change your condition or anything. It just it just alters that list price. Now, never would I actually do it, but as soon as you change your list price, you're going to see that your net profit adjusts, your expected ROI percent also adjusts. Now, as you can see here, this one happens to be at a loss, but let's say I was listing this book at $11.99, you would be able to see that it's going to have a net profit of $3.89 after all costs, and the ROA percent is going to be over there. Now, at this point, I would be all done, and I'd be ready to hit submit. Now, when I do hit submit, it's going to think about it for two or three seconds, and it's going to send a signal to my Dymo printer. And just like that, the book is listed. That noise that you heard was my Dymo printer printing out the label for the book. And then what I would do is I would take my label off of the printer and then you just place it on the book. And we're all done with that. That is the one touch method. It's pretty efficient. Uh, when you're listing in live mode, uh, it would actually be uh, sending it to the correct destination. It would be creating the shipment for you. And if you were packing the box as you went, you would actually be able to put it in the box because it is absolutely going to that warehouse. Because we're in private mode, you'll notice that it didn't create a shipment and ask me to accept it. It just went ahead and gave me a tentative destination, which means that it thinks it's going to go there, but you won't know for sure until you're done listing all of your items and then you review the batch and send it. A really nice feature with Inventory Lab is uh, this bar down here. 
It'll give you how many SKUs and items you have in the batch so far. It gives you an average sales rank for the entire batch. And it gives you your total sales value and the buy cost associated with that leaving you with a net profit here. So it's a great snapshot. It's a great way of gauging your own performance as you go. And it's also a great way of seeing just how effectively you're sourcing. Now let's go on and I'm going to use the next book here that I'm going to classify in good condition. And I want to show you the way that I list. So I go ahead and I scan my book. And I look at the artwork to make sure it's correct. I look at my rank. Now you're going to notice that most of what I put in for the very first book is going to carry over. So I don't have to change anything about the cost, the purchase date. I don't have to change anything about the SKU. It just carries over and gives me one. You're also going to notice that it carries over the condition with the condition note that you've got preset as the default. Now I did mention that I want to list this book as good. So I'm just going to drop down, select good, and you're going to verify that that's the correct condition note. If you're good with that, then you're already done with this side of the screen and you come on over to the pricing. Now you're going to notice that I have a default price of $999. That's because I want to list and I want to list very quickly. So I set a default price and I completely ignore setting a price on this side at all. Here's what this does for me. I do not have more than three hours per day to devote to this business during the week. If I'm going to list in the morning, I want to be able to finish in about 20 to 30 minutes if I'm going to send out one box or an hour tops if I'm sending out multiple boxes. So I need to get through this extremely quickly. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to list it using a default price of $999. I'm going to submit the batches that way. I'm going to ship everything out. And then later tonight or the next day uh, when I've got free time, I will go in and I will manually price in Seller Central uh, everything that I have shipped out before it goes live. I do like to set the first initial price myself because of the way that I reprice. As all of you know, I use reprice it, but I don't let reprice it dictate my initial price because of my particular repricing strategies. So in my method, I'm actually all done here. I just submit the book. And it prints out from the printer. Now, in my method, I am not going to label the book right now. You're going to notice I do not rip it off the Dymo printer. I leave it where it is, and I just keep going. What I'm going to do with the next couple of books is I'm just going to be quiet, and I'm going to let you see what I do on the screen, and you're going to see just how fast this is. Pretty cool stuff, huh? That was four books in a little over a minute. And keep in mind, as I was going through the screen, I was changing all kinds of stuff that usually doesn't happen. You can usually find a groove and you've got 15 to 20 books that are all in good condition with the same condition note. And you're literally just scanning, submitting, scan, submit. And you can send up to eight to 10 books per minute. That was just an illustration of how you can make inventory lab almost act like a bulk lister. Hopefully that helps you folks to see that you can get creative with your tools and don't have to use them just one way. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video and you wanna see me make more of them, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. And if you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and tap on that book bag up there in the corner. And while you're in there, go ahead and tap on that bell. 
That's going to set you up with notifications so that you know when new videos drop. Until next time, let's go make some money.